Good evening. I am Arachna of the Spider People, your hostess with a mostess. And welcome to Beware Theater, because this Beware you're gonna see some really bad movies. We have vampires, werewolves, monsters, aliens, and of course, the undead. So take a load off, pull up a couch, and fasten your seatbelt. It's gonna be a creepy night. Tonight, we watch 1961 low-budget cult classic, Night Tide. It was one of the many psychological movies that were very popular back in the 1960s that had plots that were, well, hard to understand. It was written by, and it was the directorial debut, of Curtis Harrington, who had worked with Roger Corman for a while, but then after this movie, unfortunately, his career went downhill. It was also the first starring role that Dennis Hopper had. And as we know, he went on to do pretty well. It is said that Night Tide is based on the poem Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe about how true love can overcome any obstacle. And in this movie, a young naive sailor gets obsessed and falls in love with a woman who is a sideshow attraction at a boardwalk amusement park. Sounds like a love story, typical love story, but no. There's a darker supernatural element here, like whether she's descended from this mystical creatures called sirens that lure soldiers to their death on the full moon. Also, if she killed her last two boyfriends, or if it was an accident. Well, in this case, testosterone-based love of our young sailor dams the torpedoes and goes full speed ahead. There's a young orphan who, with an unknown past, a drunken sailor, a creepy sideshow exhibit, a prophetic tarot card reading, a mysterious woman in black, an upfront look at the beautiful historic carousel in the Santa Monica Pier, and a twist ending. So now we watch. Night Tide.
Excuse me, uh, do you mind if I sit here? I can't see anything but their backs from where I'm sitting. It's all right. Thank you. That's really a great combo, huh? I'd like to listen, please. That's real fine music, isn't it? Yes, I like it. You mind if I buy you a drink? No, thank you. I'd like to. No, thank you. Si demain, ta veris met tous les coups sur un cap. On est pour y cinéma. Ta sénande tu me sana. Who is that woman? I don't know. Well, what did she say to you? Nothing. Would you pay my check for me, please? Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. I don't know how to reach you or anything like I'd like to see you again if it's okay. It's impossible. Hey, wait. Um, just let me talk to you for a little while. I'll just walk along with you. Shouldn't be out alone on a night like this anyway. Would I be safe with you? Yes. Hey, I know that woman upset you. I thought maybe you'd need somebody to talk to. Come on, is this the way? Okay. Here's where I live. <laughs> it's a merry-go-round. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you live inside a wooden horse? No. My apartment is upstairs. It must be pretty noisy living over a merry-go-round. Sometimes. But I love the music. It reminds me of when... Of when you were a kid? Yes. Well, good night. Wait a minute. I don't even know your name. My name's Johnny. I am called Mora. Aren't you going to invite me upstairs for, for a while? I have to go in. Just for a while. Good night, Johnny. Hey, Mora. Well, can I see you tomorrow? Please? All right. I'll fix breakfast for you. Okay, what time? Around 11. Okay, I'll be here at 11. Good night. Night. the merry-go-round already? Sure am. Sunday's our big day. Those look like beautiful horses. Do you mind if I look at them? Sure. Go right ahead, sir. Thank you. Don't cost nothing to look. Them horses are all hand carved. Imported from Bavaria. Most people don't notice how special they are. They're the finest in the country. Morning, Dad. Uh, good morning, Ellen. 
uh, just showing this young man here what fine horses we got. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this is my granddaughter, Ella. Hello. Hello. What's your name, son? Johnny. Johnny Drake. How are you? Dad, have you got the key to the cash box? Oh, yeah. Got them here somewhere. Oh, thank you. I better be getting upstairs. I'll see you around. Hey. Uh, Beautiful horses. Uh, who are you going to visit? Well, I'm just going to visit a girl named Maura. Maura? Uh-huh. I ain't never seen you around here before. You, uh, just, um, meet her or something? No. No, I've known her for a while. Oh. Well, I'll see you around. Well, so long, son. Okay. Johnny? Good morning. Good morning. Come in. Thank you. How are you? I'm pretty good. Good. Wow. This is quite a place you got here. Thank you. I collect things from the ocean. Yeah, so I see. Can I take your hat? Oh, thank you. Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm starving. Good. Breakfast is ready. I have it on the balcony. Okay. Come on. Where's the balcony? Right here. Oh. Hey, Maura? Yes? Sure have a great view. Thank you. I love it. Let's make a toast. All right. To you and me. And to the beautiful Pacific. To us, Johnny. <laughs> I hope you like fish. I found these wonderful fresh mackerel this morning. Oh, I love food from the ocean, especially lobster and crab and sea urchin. Do you ever eat sea urchin? No, I never have. It's like a wonderful ocean fruit. You scoop them out like a pomegranate. I like to taste one sometime. Oh, they're rare around here, but I think I know where I can get some. Maybe next time? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I mean, do you work or what? Yes, I work. In fact, I have to work today. On Sunday? What do you do? When I told you my name, hadn't you ever heard it before? No, I don't think so. Well, I work on the amusement pier. I'm an attraction. What, are you a dancer? No. <laughs> They throw baseballs at you. Don't they? Not really, don't they? No. <laughs> My job isn't dangerous. I give up. What do you do? I'm a mermaid. You're a what? A mermaid. Half woman, half fish. I don't get it. Oh, it's very simple. I wear an artificial fish tail, and I lie in a tank that looks like it's filled with water. And people pay 25 cents and come and look at me. And that's how I make my living. Don't you ever get tired of it? 
Sometimes. But it's restful anyway. I told you about myself. What about you? <laughs> Me, I'm a member of the U.S. Navy. <laughs> uh, do you want to know? Yes. Well... My mother, uh... My father left my mother and I when I was very young. So I became very close to my mother. And I've always wanted to see the world and I never had a chance to. I couldn't. And my mother fell ill and died. So I figured the easiest way to get out of Denver, Colorado was to join the Navy, see the world. But I haven't seen any of it yet. You will? I hope so. Are you going to eat any more? No. They're attracted by the food on your plate. Look at that one. Watch them. One will come too close. They get bolder and bolder. Hey. You. Surprised you, didn't I? Where did you ever learn to do something like that? I don't remember. Probably on the island where I was born. Huh. There, there. Don't be afraid, little bird. I won't hurt you. Sweet bird, don't be afraid. <laughs> I like those. What? My poster. Oh, is that supposed to be you? Mm hmm. It's the way I look when I'm in my costume. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I get to see this. You will. I wonder where Sam is. Who's Sam? He's the owner of the show. My boss, as you say. Hey, aren't you afraid people are going to see you out here? No. They don't pay any attention to the place until Sam begins to spiel. Oh, yeah? you, Captain Murdoch. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Oh, I was, I was just thinking, my dear. Yes, I was, uh, I was merely contemplating some important matters in the quiet peace of the uh, summer afternoon. Why are you so late? I'm not late enough to make any difference. Run along now and get ready, will you? Oh, I will, but I want to introduce a friend of mine. This is Johnny Drake, Captain Murdoch. How do you do? How are you? <laughs> Hurry along now. I'll be warming up the amplifier. All right. I'm going to put my costume on. I'll call you when I'm ready. Hey, you're not going to be long, are no. you? No. Okay. Tell me, young man. You've been sailing the seas for how long? Oh, not long at all. I've only gone as far as the Hawaiian Islands. I'm stationed down in Pedro. Oh, that's a pity. That's a pity. I thought we might reminisce. You know, compare notes as one seaman to another. You know I'm retired from His Majesty's service. Oh, you mean the English Navy? Precisely, precisely, the English Navy. Later on, I became captain of my own ship. That's how I found her, on one of my voyages. You mean Maura? Yes, well, perhaps she's told you all about it. No, she hasn't. She told me uh, something about coming from an island. You know, you might be interested in that story. It's a very unusual one. Now, why don't you come and visit me sometime? Well, listen, maybe I can come down a... Uh... Some weekend when I have liberty. Yes, yes, no hurry, no hurry at all. But I tell you what, I'll give you my card. I live in Venice. It's not as grand as its Italian namesake, but it has a certain charm, nevertheless. <laughs> Captain Samuel Murdoch. Yes. I'm ready, John. Oh, uh, well, I, I'll see you around. Yes, yes, goodbye. Bye. Mora, ladies and gentlemen, Mora the Mermaid. 
the strangest creature in captivity. See her alive. See her living underwater. Half woman, half fish. The strangest creature in captivity. For 25 cents, ladies and gentlemen. One quarter of a dollar. The thrill of your life. Only 25 cents. Four of the birthday. So Sailor Johnny is out on liberty, and one night he goes to the Santa Monica Pier all by himself. What? He didn't have any sailor buddies that wanted to hang out with him? Apparently not, so he's really lonely. So he goes into this bohemian bar, buys a drink, listens to jazz, and he fixates on this beautiful woman across the room named Mora, who won't give him the time of day. Well, he gives her puppy dog eyes and he follows her and she agrees to let him walk her home because, well, you know, it's not safe for her to be out at night walking by herself. Safe from who? How about him? At any rate, his Colorado bumpkin charm must have worked because she agrees to make him breakfast the next morning. And no, not after he spent the night and tried to grope her, but he went home. And home for Mora is an apartment above the carousel on the Santa Monica Pier in the Loof Hippodrome building, which is now a National Historic Landmark. So Johnny is so excited that he has another shot at Mora, he gets there early. And by getting there early, he gets to see the carousel open up, and he gets an up-close and personal look at the beautiful carved horses and the Wurlitzer band organ. He also gets some weird vibes from the owner of the carousel about Mora. And he also gets some Google eyes from his granddaughter, Ellen, who thinks that Johnny looks pretty good. So Mora makes Johnny breakfast out on the balcony overlooking the ocean. And guess what's for breakfast? Surprise, a dead mackerel she found on the beach while she was walking. I hope she cooked it. But you know, Johnny didn't eat very much, so maybe she didn't. They don't say. But then these seagulls start circling. I guess they had their eye on that dead mackerel too. And then this one swoops down, she grabs it and she starts petting it. Who does that? Maybe she's a secret seagull whisperer? And if that's not weird enough, Maura's story is that she's a professional mermaid and she wears this fake tail and she lays in this big old fish tank and people pay 25 cents to come look at her. And her boss is this old British sea captain who found her on a Greek island when she was just a little girl. How do you put that on your resume? No, Deadly, I'm not going to pay 25 cents to see you in the bathtub. I can see you right here. But you do look kind of cute. Los Angeles, now arriving, gate one. <sighs> hey, Moore, what's with this Sam character? Sam? Yeah. Nothing. What do you mean? I mean, uh, what's his story? Who is he? You've been thinking about him, haven't you? Yeah, sort of. Sort of a funny old guy. He's just a lonely old man. Do you know him very well? Quite well. He's my employer. Sometimes I think my only friend. He's your only friend? What about me? Of course you. 
You don't know me very well. Maybe after you get to know me. I think I know you pretty well. On our third meeting? No. But I'd like you to know me better. I'm not afraid of that. Why should you be afraid? Tell me, did Sam say anything to you about me? He said that he found you on some island. Yes, he did. He found me as an orphan on the island of Mykonos. I was just a child and he adopted me. You mean he's your, uh... My guardian. He's been like a father to me. I owe him everything. I'm sorry, I didn't even realize. I, I, if I said anything unkind about him, I'm sorry. That's all right. I know that he's a strange man. But he's been so good to me, and I'm grateful. And I know you can understand that because of what you told me about your mother. Would you like some more coffee? I'd love some. Love the sun, don't you? Yes. The sun. And the moon and the stars. And the sea. Yes, the sea. Guess I love the sea most of all. But I'm afraid of it, too. Guess we're all a little afraid of what we love. Here's your coffee, Dad. Uh, thank you, dear. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thank you, my dear. We were just having some tea. Do you want some? Well, I was just going out for some coffee. Oh, you can have that here. I just said tea, but I meant coffee. Madame Romanovich here is the only one who drinks tea. And how are you, lad? Hi there, how are you? Pretty fine, pretty fine. That's good. Sit down, young man. What a dreadful invention these tea bags are. If everyone insisted on using tea bags, I'd never be able to read anyone's tea leaves. Isn't that so, young man? Yeah, I guess so. Of course, for myself, it doesn't really matter. I can't read my own anyway. Fortune tellers never can, you know. They can see for everybody else, but not for themselves. <laughs> it's quite frustrating at times. Must be. Coffee. Thank you. Mm. 
How long you been in the Navy? Just a little over a year. What part of the country are you from? I'm from Denver, Colorado. Now, this is my first time out on the coast. Oh, then you are a visitor in our midst. Yeah, I guess you could call me that. I like it out here. When I get out of the Navy, I'd like to locate out here. Hello, folks. Oh, hello. Dad, it's Lieutenant Henderson. Oh, how are you, Lieutenant? Fine. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, thank you. I can't. You haven't seen anything new or unusual, have you? No, I haven't. Have you, Dad? No. How's things with you, Lieutenant? You come across any new clues? Maybe. We're not quite sure about it yet, though. There's not very much to go on. It's nice to know you ain't just given up. Well, I'd better be on my way. See you all again soon. Well, bye, Lieutenant. Bye. What was that all about? Uh, that was Lieutenant Henderson of the Venice Police. He was asking us about Mora. Mora? What about her? You're a stranger here, and I guess you don't know what everybody here knows. Ellen, dear. You're meddling. But I think you ought to know. I think somebody ought to tell him. Don't you, Dad? Why, sure. Certainly in no secret. In the past two years, Morris had two boyfriends, and they're both dead now. Well, do the police think that had something to do with her? Nothing's been proved. No, not yet. But don't you think the fact that it's happened twice is enough? They were both nice boys. They went around with her. Then suddenly, they disappear. A few days later, their bodies are found. Washed up on shore. Drowned. Nevertheless, my dear, there wasn't a shred of evidence that it wasn't simply a most unfortunate coincidence. The police haven't been able to make a single arrest. I know, but if she didn't cause their death, then she brings bad luck, and that's almost as bad. I bet she didn't tell you about those boys, did she? Hello? Merry-go-round. Oh, we want to ride the merry-go-round. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, just hold the line, Roger. Hey, sailor, it's for you. That's funny because nobody knows I'm here. Hello? 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 I don't know. Um, look, something's come up. I'm going to have to go. Thank you for the coffee. Just a minute, young man. Do drop by and see me. The cards will tell you a good break.
Well, well, what a jolly surprise. Come in, come in, come in. Well, you finally decided to honor me with a visit. Yes, yes, we were talking about my ward, weren't we? Well, uh, what I have to say is rather difficult to explain, particularly to young people, you know. I feel that young people nowadays form their opinions about life too soon. One shouldn't do that. But then perhaps you're different. What were you going to tell me about me? Oh, my dear, 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 dear. Maybe you aren't different. Patience, young man. Patience is a virtue. You should learn that. But, uh, no, actually, uh, what I want to tell you is difficult to put into words. You are in grave and serious danger as long as you continue to see Mora. I'm in danger from you? No, certainly not. Then what are you talking about? Mora, my friend, Mora. You must be crazy. On the contrary, I'm quite sane. And Mora is quite dangerous to you. In what way? Well, uh, shall we say that she, uh, that she suffers from a certain compulsion which might cause her to take your life? You're trying to tell me that she's insane? Not precisely, but it might be better if you thought she were. Oh, I wish you'd take my word for it. Break off this, this acquaintance before it's too late. You're a nice young fellow. I wouldn't like to see you get hurt. You hit that stuff pretty hard, huh? Well, it may seem that way to your young eyes, but at my age, one needs a little stimulant. You'll find that out later on. You were going to tell me some more about Mora. Oh, yes, yes. So I was, so I was. Well, you've, you've read the Greek myths, haven't you? No, no, I haven't. You certainly know the legend of the sirens who in ancient days used to lure seafaring men to their destruction. Yeah, I've sort of heard of them. Well, the sirens were a strange race of sea people, half human, half creatures of the sea. The female of the species were uh, known popularly as mermaids. That means women of the sea. It's like that, uh, that act you and Moore put on. Exactly. But that's a fake, isn't it? A sideshow illusion. You wouldn't believe that they actually exist, would you? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Well, let me tell you, young man, that things happen in this world never dreamt of in your philosophy. Where do you think myths come from? Do you think they're just made up? No, they spring from truth. Ancient truth. Living truth. Uh, what does this have to do with Mora? She was a sweet little thing. She lived here with me. Up there. That was her room. Behind that door. I found her. I found her on an island. I didn't know then what she was to become. I've become? I didn't know then that she belonged to that ancient race. She's a monster. And if you don't stop seeing her, uh, I want you. That's all I can do. Uh, look, just tell me one thing. Cap Captain Murdoch, there's a woman that's been bothering Mora. Now, I think she's here. I just want to talk to her, that's all. Woman? There isn't any woman. I'm all alone. Captain Murdoch. Captain Murdoch. Sir. So Captain Murdoch found Mora on the Greek island of Mykonos when she was this orphan child. So he felt sorry for her and he brings her home and he adopts her and he raises her as his own child. Apparently, he taught her how to dance because she didn't seem to have any rhythm in that bongo beach party dance. Unless that's how mermaids dance with legs. And who was that mysterious woman in black with a black veil that scared Mora so much she fainted? Well, these and other questions finally get to Johnny. 
and he decides he needs to learn more about Mora, especially since the police have her as a person of interest in the deaths of her previous two boyfriends who washed up on shore, drowned. And then Johnny gets this mysterious phone call and there's nobody on the other line. And he looks out and he sees the woman in black walking down the street. So he follows her and she leads him to Captain Murdoch's home. And then she disappears. So Captain Murdoch lets him in and says, I don't know any lady in black. I've never seen anybody like that. So did Johnny really see her or not? And then Captain Murdoch gets another drink and he tells Johnny to his face he's in mortal danger from Mora because, well, she has this compulsion that might make her kill him. Yikes. And then he says, well, that's because Mora is descended from a race of ancient sea creatures called sirens who lure sailors to their death. And then Captain Murdoch passes out drunk. So Johnny says, well, this is all very poetical and mysterious and downright weird, and I don't believe a bit of it, mainly because, well, he's never read any Greek mythology. Deadly, I know that's you under that veil. No, it's really you. I know it's you here. Oh. It was right of him to tell you, but I didn't want you to know. Now I suppose I, I won't see you anymore. Well, you don't think I believed him, do you? But it's true, Johnny. They are waiting for me to join them. You've seen one of them. Do you mean that woman? You saw how she looked at me. How she spoke to me. She's one of them. She's one of the sea people and she's here to remind me of the time that I must go to them in the sea. I don't know how or where you got these ideas, but they're wrong. You see, these things don't happen. Oh, Johnny, if only they didn't. If only they couldn't happen. You Americans have such a simple view of the world. You think that everything can be seen and touched and weighed and measured. You've discovered reality, but you don't even know what it is. Then you mean that everything Sam told me is the truth? Almost everything. Well, will you just tell me how you know? Because I feel the sea water in my veins. Because I listen to the roar of the sea and it speaks to me like a mother's voice. The tide pulls at my heart. And the face of the moon fills my soul with a strange longing. Laura, I don't understand. Johnny, I'm so afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Look, look, I don't know what this is all about, you see. I don't know what it's all about. But I know that I'm here and that we'll work this out. Hold me. Hold me. My dear, dear boy. I hope you don't mind my telling you, but I will you to come here. I really did, and I'm so happy that it worked. Oh, really? I know you have a problem, a very serious problem, and I'm going to try and help you. 
Thank you. I'd appreciate that. After the reading. After the reading is time enough to thank me. Uh, how much does a reading cost? We'll try for two dollars. You can afford that, can't you? Oh, well, sure, that's fine. Have you ever had a tarot reading before? No, I've never been to a fortune teller before. Don't use that expression, fortune teller. It's so vulgar. I prefer to be known as a chiromancer or clairvoyant. Now, first we must find the card that represents you. Here you are, the Knight of Cups. Why is that me? Because this card represents a fair young man Innocent and searching. <laughs> Take a good look at these cards, young man. They contain all the secrets of the universe. How can a deck of cards contain all the secrets of the universe? Each card is a symbol. Linked together properly, the total of all these symbols contains the total of man's knowledge. Yeah, it's like uh, putting a message into a code. Exactly. Now, this is what crosses you. Mm -hmm. This is what crowns you. This is what is beneath you. Mm -hmm. This is what is behind you. What is before you. This is you. Your house, your hopes and fears, and this is your future. What do you say? How strange. What? There are certain lunar aspects suggested here. The moon card represents the journey into the unknown. The dog and the wolf, the fears of the mind, the deep primitive instincts in all of us. You see the crab is attempting to climb out of the water onto the land, but it almost always sinks back again. What does that mean? Don't be impatient. I don't like to make a mistake. A mistake in this profession can be disastrous. You see, the lunar card is most unhappily placed next to the card known as the hanged man. What does the hanged man mean? Ah, this is a card of profound significance. The figure shows life in suspension. It has often falsely been called a card of martyrdom, but martyrdom involves suffering. And if you will look closely at the face of the figure, you will see that it expresses deep entrancement. This mm. card shows that a great awakening is possible. And reminds one that after the sacred mystery of death, there is the glorious mystery of resurrection. Well, uh, is that good or bad? My dear boy, the cards don't lend themselves to all the simplification. Well, what about Mora? I'm afraid she's caught in a vortex of evil. And you, it saddens me to tell you, but you are in danger, grave danger. What kind of danger? Now, that is a question you do not need to ask me. The answer lies already in your heart. Well, I wouldn't put much stock on what a fortune teller says. I don't. It's just when you keep hearing things over and over again, you start believing it after a while. You said some things about Mora. What do you really know about her? Oh, I've been sorry about what I said the other afternoon. Well, it was really none of my business. I was just telling you what I'd read in the newspapers, because I thought you ought to know. I just can't believe that... Are you in love with her? Yes. funny thing about love, um, 
It can happen very suddenly, you know what I mean? Like when you're lonely or when you've been looking for someone. I don't know what to do for more. See, she believes it too. Believes what? That she killed those boys? No, no, no. I, I can't explain. Well, try not to worry about it. Why, maybe things will turn out better than you think. You want some more coffee? I'm gonna go for a walk. Get some time to kill before uh, Mara gets home. Mara? Hi. I'm taking a bath. Um, did you have a good day today? I sure did. There were lots of people on the pier. That's good. I'm sort of tired. Why don't you lie down for a while? Yeah, I think I will. You gonna be in there long? No, not long. Okay. That's good. I'm anxious to see you.
the morning. How are you this morning? Um, I'm sleepy. Sleepy? Mm-hmm. Can I make you breakfast? No, you stay in bed. I want you to rest. Mm, I'd like to. Okay. How do you feel? <laughs> I feel stiff all over. Oh. That's all right. Why don't you go have a massage? Okay. I won't leave you alone, now. I'll be all right. It's morning now. You sure you'll be all right? Mm-hmm. Where's the bathhouse? It's down at the end of the pier. Will you get some rest while I'm gone? Mm -hmm. I'll see you in a while. All right. Tied up in knots, kid. What's the matter? Girlfriend ain't uh, treating you all right? Hmm? No, it's just. I'm just a little tense, that's all, I guess. Uh, we put you in good shape. Well, fancy seeing you here. What a delightful surprise. Hi. Uh, right. And how are you today, Bruno? Oh, Captain, you want me to pound you later? Now, am I likely to forego a pleasure like that? By the way, Johnny, I hope you haven't forgotten the conversation we had the other day. I've been really worried about you, you know. Really? Yes, really. Tell me something. Has, uh, has Maura been acting a little odd recently? No. Sure, now. You're telling me the truth? Well, it doesn't matter. It's just that I want to give you a bit of advice. You must be especially careful now at the time of the full moon. Because that's when the tides pull the strongest. As I said, uh, a word to the wise. So Moore is not happy that Sam told Johnny about her fishy background. But she doesn't deny that she is a mermaid. But she does say that she's afraid of that woman in black and that she's afraid that that woman is part of the ancient siren race come to take her back to the sea to join them. Well, Johnny hears that and is like, oh, come on, and he tries to talk her out of it. And if that wasn't strange enough, then Madame Rovanovich, first she tells him how to read tarot cards and then she reads the cards and she tells him he's in grave danger. Well, that's the second person that's told him that. So while Maura is taking a bath after work, Johnny takes a nap. And he has this nightmare and he's dreaming about mermaids and sea monsters trying to get him. And when he wakes up, Maura's gone. And he looks around and he wanders around trying to find her and calling her name. And you know, if you ever wondered what the underside of the Santa Monica Pier looks like, Here's your chance, because he's wandering around calling her name in the surf. And then he sees her. She's stuck on a pier. I guess she was called by the sea, and she tried to go out there, and she got stuck. So he rescues her, and he takes her home, and he puts her to bed. And because it's still the haze code, he sleeps on the floor. So the next day, he runs into Captain Murdoch again, who warns him the second time he's in grave danger from Mora. Johnny, think with your head for once instead of that other part of your anatomy. Uh, if she really is a mermaid, the full moon's right around the corner. Tick tock, you need to get out of there before something bad happens. Okay, I get it. The hanged man is a sacrifice. The moon card is the unknown. Yeah, I mean, I'm sacrificing time to watch this movie, and a lot of it is still unknown to me. I don't understand. But what do the rest of the cards say? Johnny, I've been thinking about last night, and I've decided that I must have been walking in my sleep. But I don't want to talk about it. 
I'm going to forget it. You know, that's the best thing I've heard you say. We'll just forget about it, all right? That's yes. what I've been trying to get you to do, you know. I know. All right, we'll forget about it. All right. Yeah. And so what are you doing? Cleaning the diving equipment. I was looking at the calendar, and I noticed that the moon was full. And I realized that the tides will be just perfect at a certain place, I know. And I thought we could go diving there this afternoon. I don't think it's a very good idea. Why? It's too cold. But the water is warm. I just don't think it's a good idea. I think you should rest. I don't want to rest, Johnny. I feel fine. You're here such a short time on the weekends, and I have the whole week to rest when you go. Please go with me. Where do you want to go, darling? It's not far from here. You'll see. How do you know where we are? Because I've been here before. Must be awfully deep here. It is. What's the point of diving here? There are reefs under here. You'll see. Johnny? What? Stay close to me. We mustn't become separated.
Who is it? Room service, reading papers. Just leave him outside. Murderer always returns to the scene of his crime. Oh, I know this isn't the exact spot where the deed occurred, but you had to see her, didn't you? You had to see the result of your monstrous act. But I loved her. You loved her. What do you know about love? I've loved her ever since she was a child. No, you did it and you must pay for it. How did you find her? God wanted me to find her. She was such a sweet, good child. Why? 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 I thought the shooting gallery was closed tonight. It is. It sounded like a case from over there. What's going on in here, buddy? Come in, Johnny. Sit down. This is somewhat irregular, but Captain Murdoch here has agreed to give us a statement, and he asked that you be present. You can go ahead now, Captain Murdoch. To begin with, I want you to know that no matter what I've done, how wicked or unreasonable it may seem, it was done for love of Mora. I've loved her ever since I found her. She was a pathetic little thing in that Greek island village. Abandoned there to almost certain starvation if I hadn't taken her into my home. But of course I realized that like all children, she would eventually grow up and leave that home. That preyed on my mind constantly. I, I couldn't face the thought of her leaving me. So I decided to plan some way to keep her with me always. The best way seemed to make her entirely dependent on my love. In order to do this, I... I told her the legend of the sea people. 
Slowly I put into her young and pliable mind the idea that she was one of them, that someday she must rejoin them, and that she couldn't expect to have normal relations with ordinary people. But I never counted on the enormous power of her own independent will. Eventually my love wasn't enough for her. She had to have another kind of love. And when she began those relationships, I decided the only thing to do was to cut them off at their source. So I killed those two young men. And I tried to persuade her in some way that she had done it. Under some strange influence from the sea people. And to a certain extent I succeeded. I managed to cast a lot of fear and doubt into her mind. But she still demanded her freedom. She left my home, she took an apartment, and then she met Johnny. And if he's told you the story, then you know the rest. So my experiment in psychology failed. Or perhaps it succeeded too well. She couldn't face a recurrence of what had gone before. So rather than destroy the person she loved, she decided to embrace the rapture of the depths. That's what happened. Isn't it? Yes. You loved her, didn't you? Then perhaps you can understand. Just a little. I do understand. Captain Murdoch, there's one thing I've been wondering about. Johnny told me about a woman who frightened Maura. She was supposed to be one of these sea people. I assume she was part of your plan. Woman, I don't know what you mean. You know, the one that I followed to your house that day. Remember? I vaguely think you mentioned something about that before, but there wasn't any woman. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I've told you everything. May I go? Guard? But I saw that woman with my own eyes. This wasn't just something out of Moore's imagination. It's almost as... It's almost as if there was some truth to what she said. I think it's more likely that Captain Murdoch is merely trying to protect the woman. I suppose so. Yes? The shore patrol men are here to pick up Drake, sir. He'll be right out. Well, good luck, my boy. Just down the hall there. Hello. I found out you were here, so I came down to see if there was anything I could do for you. Thank you. I'm sorry about Maura. I hope that maybe on your next leave you'll come by and take a ride on the merry-go-round. I'd like to do that. I'll see you later.
So there you have it, another monochromatic movie marvel with a whole bunch of unanswered questions like, was she or was she not a real mermaid? And who was the woman in black? This movie teach me to never underestimate the combination of Greek mythology and an Edgar Allan Poe poem about the power of undying love. It never ends well. This movie also teach me that sometimes it's best to let mermaids in a fish tank lie, especially if their father wants you gone. So until next time, or not, this is Arachna of the Spider People, wishing you nighty night, and remember it's not worth it to fight over your breakfast with a seagull. Their bite is worse than their bark. Oh, Deadly, what a beautiful day to walk on the amusement pier. The sun is shining, the seagulls are flying, and everybody's having a good time. Hey, hey, come back here with my popcorn. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't see you. That bird took my popcorn. You have more trouble than that, honey. Here, let me read your cards for you. No, I, I don't want to know the future. No, you must let me read your cards. I sense you are in grave danger from something in the ocean. Of course we're all in danger from the ocean. We can drown in the ocean. Okay, we make this quick and easy. Pick a card and show it to me. I said I don't want a card reading. I said pick a card. Okay, okay, what's it gonna cost me? Nothing, this is free advice and you better take it or suffer the consequences. All right, since you put it that way. Oh no, the mermaid card. This is very, very bad. Quick, pick another card to cancel it out. What? What's bad? Pick another card. There. <gasps> the moon card. Oh, it can't be. Can't be what? The curse is back. Legend says that when the full moon rises in the summer sky, Siren mermaids call you to die. What kind of stupid poem is that? One that could save your life. Beware singing mermaids that lure you into the ocean. Look, I don't believe in curses. Here's your stupid cards back. Thank you, goodbye, lady. Come on, deadly. Remind me to stay away from poem quoting fortune tellers. They don't make any sense. And whatever you do, don't ride the merry-go-round. I thought mermaids were a good thing. Oh, look, a merry-go-round. Oh, let's ride the cute seahorses. They're not mermaids, right? We should be safe. Oh, this brings back memories. Wait a minute, the merry-go-round's going faster and faster. I'm getting dizzy. Oh, stop, stop. They're running away with us, Deadly. Hang on. And is that the full moon in the middle of the day? Oh, that crazy lady was right. Oh, ah! Oh, we're gonna drown. Uh, 
wait a minute, I can breathe. How is that possible? And where are my shoes? Uh, oh, and look at all the plastic. Is this one of those garbage patches I heard about? Oh, this is awful. Oh, uh, oh is that a mermaid down there? Who are you and where are we? I am Sirena, protector of all mermaids. Welcome to our ancient home. Oh, hello. I'm Arachna the Cider People and this is my friend Deadly. And why are we here? I sent my seahorses to bring us humans to help us rescue our lost sisters. Lost sisters? Yes, pirates have been stealing mermaids for centuries and I run the special ops that retrieves them. We need rescuers with legs, and that is why you are here. Your mission is to enter this pirate ship and rescue our mermaid sister, Marina. If you are successful, the seahorses will wait for you and bring you back. If you're not, well, what's more trash in the ocean, right? Well, since you put it that way, uh, sure, we'll help. Good. There is a secret door at the bottom back of this ship. You enter there. Proceed to the deck where Marina is being held in a tank. You will rescue her and my seahorses will bring you back and take you to shore. Have a successful mission. You're our only hope. Deadly never in a million years did I expect to be part of a mermaid rescue squad. Oh look, I can see the bottom of the ship. Well, this looks like a pirate ship, all right. And that must be Marina in that fish tank. Sirena sent us to rescue you. Act normal. Thank you for coming. You shouldn't have. They'll never let me go. I'm their main attraction. Oh, oh hi there. Look what the tide brought in. I go down and get more ramen. You guys show up. Well, reservation said there would be some stragglers, and uh, well, we've been waiting for you. Uh, waiting for us? Oh no, our cover's blown. Welcome aboard, mateys. This here is the pirate party ship Skull and Bones, and I'm Captain Jones. You should be down in the galley with everyone else having lunch. After lunch, you come up here, and see our show. And there's our main event, a real live mermaid. Ain't she a beaut? Yep. We caught her on one of our fishing outings. She was just sitting there, singing away, stranded on an island. We saw her showbiz potential and we brought her with us. So settle yourselves in and we'll see you for the show. Okay, he's gone. All right, here's the plan, Marina. You do your show as normal, and then jump as high as you can and as far as you can out of that tank, and Deadly and I will grab you and throw you overboard, and we'll go too, and we'll all get away, okay? Well, it's worth a try. All right, Deadly, let's go hide. Welcome, everyone, to the Pirate Party Ship Skull and Bones. I'm Captain Jones at your service. And welcome to our show of the day, featuring our very own mermaid, Marina. Okay, one, two, three. All right, then let's jump. You scurvy landlubbers, bring back my mermaid. She's not insured. Thank you so much for rescuing me. Then I must leave you. The seahorses will take you back to shore. Bye bye. What a nice mermaid. But you know, Deadly, we've done some really interesting things today. And some things I'll never do again, like jump off a pirate ship. 
But you know, I do promise from now on I will recycle all our plastic. I mean, the ocean's a mess. <laughs>